The only thing I regret is that he wasted my time, and I can't get that back. See, I knew she wasn't talking about us. She wasn't talking about the family she had acquired, the memories, the good times with him or us. But the fact that she knew years ago that he didn't want to be with her. And he so selfishly made her waste of time. She could have moved on, but she didn't ever. She was a beautiful woman, but she never moved on. Maybe you can't move on after real love. I don't know, she was a beautiful woman, but she never moved on. love-filled promises. All night whispered conversations about our favorite children's names. I remember long walks on the beach, walks in which took place under worryless circumstances. I remember holding hands under starlit skies and full moons. If we couldn't get to the beach, you would make sure to find the stars in the neighborhood. Our fingers locked, our smiles glued to our faces, our souls intertwined and bound to a life destined for happiness. I remember our souls aligned and a deep hearted laughter. Early morning phone calls to remind each other that we had something special, that we had something more than just something more in common. You always preferred calling because you said you love to hear my voice in the morning. I remember finishing his sentences. He would give me a special nod to reassure me that he had finished my thought, you know? We made dreams a reality. We turned our goals into a walk down the aisle, into a home, and then children to fill it all. See, we just didn't build a home, we built memories. We were rich with love and moral prosperity. I remember the recitals you said you could never make because of work, but always made. How you were there to see our children take the first steps right until you walked them down the aisle when it was their turn. We took so much time to focus on our dreams and sand the pillars we had built. We focused so much on being a whole that we began to forget who we were as individuals. I find myself after all these years with nothing more than memories. Something has changed. My love is not the same. He is not the same. My time with him is not what it was. We don't laugh anymore. We don't walk anymore. The tender whispers we shared have become idle threats and loud cries in the serenity that we built together. Is it me? I often ask myself that question. I ask myself, is it something that I have done? Maybe I have changed. Maybe I forgot how to love him. Maybe I am not enough anymore. Perhaps I am not as beautiful as he once thought. I've lost my intrigue. At this stage in our lives, all that matters is the time that we share and what we do with that time. We have fulfilled all of our obligations to our family. Now it's our time, but it seems as though he no longer can find the time for me. I'm filled with regret and frustration, anger and disbelief, pain and hurt, confusion and ailments I lack words to describe. Then I realize after much inquiry that it was not me that has altered the agreement we made to each other over 20 years ago, but it was him. He's chosen to find affection elsewhere, to give his heart, which he placed in my hands a long time ago, to nurture and protect another. He took it upon himself to bury the dreams and the memories, to tarnish the purity of what God blessed him and our children benefited from. So he took it upon himself to put our love in a casket as he gallivants like an old young fool around a woman who couldn't beat me if I taught her myself how to be so. He trades in his queen for a peasant in which he can stain and dirty the filthiest motel sheets adulterating money can buy. There is no love. Where is the respect that I earned years ago? But that's okay. He thinks now that after all these years he can discard me, destroy me. He forgets who I am, who I have been. I am a woman. My name resounds strength. My smile shines light on what is truth. And my eyes tell a story of pride and joy in the middle of adversity. Sure, I am hurt. I am in pain. But I will emerge from this just like I have been victorious and favored in everything else in my life. So you go, girl. You can have him. You can have the scraps of a man who I used to call a husband. You two together is just yesterday's paper. I wish most of it was in the garage. I can't get love back. I can't laugh again. Maybe I will even cry over a man again. I don't feel like I've wasted my life. I just wish you wouldn't have wasted my time because my time oh my is all that I can't get back. Yep. Mm. 
Janelle, everybody. Give it up for Janelle. Well, now that we got that out of the way, we talked four women. Now I'm going to talk two women. Oh. So, I am working on a book that comes out. What up, Tess? <laughs> I'm working on my book that comes out in a couple of months. It's called The Broken Bachelor. And I'm going to read one or two pieces from it. And then we'll be done. This is called Dope. You still with me uptown? Are you still with me uptown? Alright, this is dope. I believe that in our case, addiction may serve a purpose. And for this purpose, an honest question. A question that will require a complicated but more than a simplified answer. But before I ask, try and think. Be hesitant and try not to answer too fast. Because my intentions will be clear, my implications won't be subtle. I don't want to argue, fuss, fight, take your time before your rebuttals. Think about, think about it before your mind takes flight. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you favors. I'm going to keep it real. I just want to add you to my stable. But when you taste what I have to offer, you're going to send for me through texts, emails, calls, Shit, you might send pigeons, throw smoke in the air, drums, telegrams, and maybe even send me a cable. Before any more confusion, complications, or this shit talking at night, altercations before and because of my implications. So let me cut the bullshit, take you right past the show, and ask you, baby, can I be your dope? You know. That sex dope. That shit that runs through your veins. That inundates and courses. The type of shit that gives you that high, the type that puts you afloat, that I need him shit like it's zero below, that I'm outside butt ass naked and I need him all over me like a fucking coat. You know what I'm talking about. The type of connection where we start off friends, fuck, and then end up foes. That I wish it, that he makes it here tonight, hope. And I love to be your indulgence. Because I got that whatever I'll do to your body flow. That when I put my hands all over you, you can't cope. And I know your secrets. I know your secrets. Your secrets. You like that dirty talk shit. That I like to put my hands all over you shit. That we get our mouths dirty shit. But I have no interest in being your friend, your priest, your knight. I want to put... I want to be your red boy. Put wings on your back and watch you take flight. But... I'm gonna keep my string on you. And when you're a naughty girl, I'm gonna use my rope to yank you like a kite. I just wanna be your vice. You know that nigga that melts your eyes. So baby, I'm asking, have you been thinking? Cause I'm not gonna ask twice. I'm here to make sure you end up with that dope lean. Put your trust in me, baby. My only reason in the game, my only claim to fame is that my strokes me. <laughs> So take caution, because my warning is that this shit is addictive, and when you don't get it, you're going to be afflicted. Love here is hesitating. And I'm in the business of deflowering, not empowering. <laughs> <laughs> know what you're getting yourself into. Once you get this dope, there is no hope, there is no going back, understand the facts. Outside my house, you will be casing. In your house, you're going to be pacing. You see me in the street, you're gonna be chasing. I won't be your lover, I am going to be your pusher. 
I provide a service without manners, without intent. I'm your sexual servant. I don't provide a hotel. This shit right here is a hospice. After me, there will be nothing. When you have to move on, you will miss the orgasmic sacrifice, the oral excellence, the strokes that were deep, that were long, that were hard, that were downright trifling. So I'm gonna ask you again, baby. Can I be your dog? You all right? Y'all good? One more? All right, this is called pray. I like that pray to God. Pray. P-R-E-Y. Deceit was the name of the game, and I wanted us to throw caution to the wind. I'll wait. Everybody with me up down. Deceit was the name of the game, and I wanted us to throw caution to the wind and put our reservations to shame. I hit it with that smooth shit. Fuck that. What's your name? What's your sign line? I let her know immediately that I needed a position filled and she could be mine. I'm a predator by nature, so I stalked what I wanted. Intelligence, beauty, achievements. Man, that sexy shit she flaunted. And I anticipated victory. I fast forwarded to intimate moments she would jot down as making history, so I sat back patiently in anticipation of what I wanted to devour, thinking about the moments I would take her petals off one by one. That's right, I'd be the one to devour. She would make me rise and I'd be her demise. I really didn't want much, just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know that depraved stuff? She looks like everything, and I mean everything is tight. So I just wanted maybe one or two nights, let out some aggression, some passion, maybe one or two fights. So I'm predator by nature, so I moved in, not counting on what she had planned for her future. I underestimated and thought that she was coy, and I thought that I could use her body and her emotions as a toy, but when we were finally face to face, staring into each other's eyes. She knocked me out of my space. I looked deeper into her eyes and I knew that I was in trouble. Maybe this shit I wasn't gonna win. And she looked deeper and deeper into my eyes. And then she spoke to me. Nothing complex, just some simple shit. She looked straight into my eyes and she said, Hey. And I said, Fuck. Yeah, wow. Looks like I'm the predator. Hey. I got down. I got down. I got down. Now one more. One more. One more. One more. All right, I'm done with this. This is called collision, and I'm out. I got back to Jersey, y'all. All right, this is called collision. Y'all ready, Uptown? Give it up to Angie and Word at 4F for the Carmen 78. Come on, let me hear y'all. Rammer. Give it up to Rammer. 4F. All right, this is called collision. To all the splendid uses that have required the presence of Many, goddamn many, God damn it. many, yeah, damn many muses. Ow. To all the nights filled with champagne and wine that ended up in emotional confusion, the mixture of my hands all over your. These inhibitions will be excluded. My tongue licking all over your. not fiction. I believe we could call this physical infusion. See, I dream about exploring 
maybe more than you allow. I get how the initial yeses turn into noes, and then I get how those noes turn into yeses. How you so carelessly allow my intrusions because you are digging how my obsessions with your skin and your curves lead to a wildly passionate erratic excursion. And let's keep it real. You love the fact that I'm your curves enthusiast. Curves. 